Good morning. We have a beautiful, cool morning. And, um, and because of it, I was inspired that I thought it was time as May begins to, to end and spring comes to an end to give you a spring tour of the garden so far. Um, one of the things that I've been doing is being inspired by um, an English gardener, actually, no, that's not correct. He's Welsh, he's a Welsh gardener called Hugh Richards and I watch his videos a lot. Um, obviously, I'm gardening in a very different uh, zone than he is and a very different set of challenges, particularly this year. Um, but one of the things that he has, that I took as inspiration was to spend time in the garden and um, sort of reflect on it, write things down and and I hadn't realised that, that that's what I was doing all the time and, and I was out this morning, the dog had me up ridiculously early and I was out this morning and I just thought I'm going to go and walk down the garden and just see. My motivation was I have a, a feeling that there are snails or something chewing away at my, at the rucola and at the cabbages and I just wanted to see. And then I sat and I thought, I need to record where this garden is at the moment. And I'll explain the reason. Firstly, disclaimer, I am not a gardener. I'm not an expert. I, um, this is my first year of really seriously having land. <laughs> and doing anything like this. My gardening experience has extended to um, a few pots. So I've grown flowers in pots because that's all I had available. So as I take you on this tour, this is a work in progress. And I, as a gardener and as a, as a person experimenting, am a work in progress. So bear with me, let's start. This is the, I'm going to call this the garden terrace because it's the top terrace. Um, it's the terrace that you come to from the two houses behind me. Um, so we have two living buildings and then the farmyard and then you come out onto this area. Um, so we'll start from the top. Um, we've got an, an area that's wild and overgrown and you've seen videos of me half starting to to turn that into um, a terrace area so the top end will be our more formal area we want to have a space where we can come out in the evening because this part once the sun drops over the mountain that terracey area is beautiful and cool in autumn um, when the sun shines on it in the afternoon, it's it's lovely and warm. So it's a nice place to go, but that's a work in progress. We got some of it done, but not all of it. And then things happened and we just didn't get around to doing it. Um, and then I've planted a, um, what I want to say, a more formal bed. I wanted flowers and um, growing things so not to eat but things to use and the purpose of that bed is things that repel mosquitoes so there's lavender in there there's citronella in there there's mints in there there's sage in there and then there are other flowers that I've never grown before so there's some cosmos and um, zinnias that are in there and there are plants that I've repurposed from other parts of the garden that have happily grown so that will definitely be a flower bed and it will evolve. I'm already looking, this, I've put borage in there and I'm like, okay, next year when I plant borage, I'm going to plant it in groups. That's something that I've reflected on and learnt. Um, then the area here, um, I cleared and I wanted this to be a more intentional um, flower area, like, um, a medicine sort of um, face 
area. Face, plants that are good for face. So I have planted, there's a um, calendula in there and I planted echinacea and I tried to plant some um, uh, chamomile. But the chamomile that I've planted, I, I can't see evidence of. So at the moment, there's things that are growing in there, but I'm not sure what they are. I've got, I planted lines, but I can see certain ones, but there are other things that I'm thinking, well, you're not in the line that I planted. And I think at the moment, that's my challenge, that there are certain things that, um, that I have planted and I know where I've put them and I can't see evidence of them. And then the weeds come up and I'm like, are you a weed or are you a plant? So I'm trying to understand that. I have planted things in, 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 in pots. As you can see, I've got a whole pot area behind me. So again, I'm learning to do that. Then in front of me, I have a wild area. That's an area I didn't clear. I just let nature do its thing, mainly because there were some um, field marigolds that have blossomed since, I think, before January. And they just were lovely. And it just added color to the to the garden and I didn't want to lose them. So um, I think that their season has now finished because they have gone to seed. So this area is a bit, not a lot happening. Well, that's my perception and I need to be patient and not mess with it. So in that one, I wanted that very much to be like a kind of useful plant. So there's plenty of dandelions in there. I've planted some hyssop in there and that was also where I put chamomile. Chamomile is growing naturally on the mountain. It's all over the place and I noticed it. And, and the ones that have I found around the garden, um, this one was a tiny little um, plant and I checked it on the plant identifier and it was like that's chamomile okay so I've put it in and it's just happily grown and I think that's something that I'm learning is looking at the plants that are growing naturally on the mountain and that I can see in the garden and going okay well I'll use you as the base so there are lots of blue flowers at the moment and the yellow I think they labeled them as oxide daisies but they're different but they just grow naturally my neighbors gave me a lovely um, gardening lesson when I was in the in the third in the first terrace and they were pulling these yellow flowers up going no 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 they used a word and I can't remember what it was but basically they're not useful for anything in their eyes so the goats couldn't eat them and you can't eat them and that's it no good no good and they yank and I'm like, don't pull my flowers out um, I have streamlined that but what I'd like to do is encourage the, the blue flowers and the yellow flowers and plant them along the edge of the property underneath the vine so that you have those growing and some of the chamomile and, and, and encourage them around the edge. And then you just have a beautiful display of flowers around the, ed around the edge of the, the terraces. So um, yeah, so it's using I think that's my homage to using nature. As you go down the garden path, we've got the beans growing. The beans are growing over the lettuce. One of the challenges of the garden is creating shade now. Um, that's a real challenge. Um, this edge of this terrace gets an awful lot of sun and it, um, it's quite intense for the amount of time that it is. So I'm trying to grow the beans. They're quite happily um, uh, going up the poles now. So that should work, I hope. Um, and the lettuce are happy. And there's rucola in there. So that's like a salad. There's lots of salady things mm. on, in this garden. There are vegetables as well. So I've also planted under the trees some more salad. There's cabbages, there's um, Swiss chard. Um, I've tried, I've grown them from seed, um, a form of kale, neroli, so it's the crinkly one. Now that's grown from seed and I've put that under the trees. From winter I planted kale at the bottom end of the garden.
curly kale, the kale that I'm used to. And um, I've got some leaves from that particular one, but the rest is it's just gone straight to seed because it was in the sun all of the winter. So that's a lesson learned. And then we've got the wild area under the tree, which at the moment has got lots of soil from the yard. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's one of those we go, okay, need to do something with that, but I don't know if I'll get around to doing something this year. That might be a, an autumn project, I don't know. Well, the sun's coming up, so shall we go and look at the other parts of the garden then? Are you ready? If you um, are new to this channel, um, then it would be really lovely if you subscribe. Um, I'm just sharing my life on this mountain. I'm sharing um, what I do every day, how we, we create a home for ourselves, which is completely unexpected. We never thought that we would be here. We had another plan for the direction of our lives. And I suppose the COVID pandemic sent us in a different direction, as I'm sure it sent many people. And we've ended up here. So um, I live on a mountain, on a small farm in the middle of central Portugal. And and I'm learning, I'm learning the language, I'm learning the culture, I'm learning how to live in this environment. And so that's what this channel is all about, the things that I learn that I hope either you find interesting or that you can learn from too, or you can help me learn. That would be lovely. So um, do come along, do join the journey and do subscribe. So I'll get on with the tour. So here we are on the, on the rest of the garden. So there are three terraces here. Um, do you know what? Actually sitting here, I'm really quite proud. I hadn't realized how lovely it is just to sit um, early in the morning and um, and see it. It's just the first time I've worked so hard. I'm getting emotional. So, yeah, this is, this is the, the, um, the food growing um, place, most definitely. This is where we're gonna grow all our food. Um, At, the, at that end are tree guilds. That's what I've been tr working towards. I'm not, that one I think is, is looking like I hoped it to be. Um, so there's uh, um, clover as ground cover. And then there's, I've based that as a herb one. So, the yellow flowers appeared and I didn't rip them all out. So there's, um, there's mints in there, there's lavenders in there, um, there's chives in there, oregano. Um, what else did I put? Caraway, I think I tried putting in there. Um, uh, borage, there's borage in there. Um, borage I grew from seed and it was really easy to grow. Um, and it's come out and it's just beautiful. So I think next year with the borage, I might be more, I might be more organized and, and where they say you, you need to plant a group together. So like three or five are put together in a, in a, a clump, but it's just beautiful because it just adds that 
really delicate blue and when you've got this yellow and then we I do have calendula it is marigolds I know I asked that I said I can't source marigolds and it, it seems that calendula and marigolds are the same thing anyway what I've seen I've grown it's like when these plants popped up and the flowers appeared it's like oh you were what I was looking for all along so I have actually got that thing I think I mentioned in another story that um I couldn't seem to source them um, to source marigolds and there they were. So this is the tomato area. So there's basil growing under the tomatoes and then marigolds around it, borage. I've tried to companion plant. I'm not sure that it's totally worked out. It's been a case of, as I've been clearing the land and working with the garden, it's like, what can I put in? And also it's this time of year, this is what you put in now. Goodness knows when I have to pull it out of the ground. It's like, oh no, there's a load of bare ground. So on this garden, there's the kale that I planted um, before Christmas, which has gone straight to seed and hasn't really grown, but I'll try that again. Um, there's celery, there's still some leeks. There are leeks that I planted before Christmas. And again, I think they just got too hot. Anyway, one is actually going to seed. One had, had almost begun to form a flower and then it fell over. It, it's like it, its roots weren't strong enough to support it. It was so disappointed. So I've left those because I'll leave those and let them let them go to flower. The flowers are beautiful. Um, I've planted other leeks to fill gaps. There's um, beetroot that's self-seeded that was already here and I just left it and that's gone to seed again and then there's some of the summer vegetables summer plants fruits and things so there's pimented um yeah the peppers and the sweet peppers and then growing all the way along the wall I've put um cucumbers and then there's the fruit trees that are so there's raspberry red red currant black currant and blueberry and we weren't sure if they would be happy here, but they seem to be really thriving. Whether the summer will kill them off or not, I don't know, but they do seem to be quite happy on that on that area. Um, ah! <laughs> oh, Zicolo, you can't... Hello, my darling. Yes, hello. Oh, oh, Zingish, you're all filthy. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? Hello. Yes, I know. It's just been so nice to sit, to sit in the garden for the morning and look at it. And then I'll come back at two, three o'clock in the afternoon when the sun is at its highest and its fiercest and I'll be like, oh my poor garden. I, sh I could waffle on for ages and my tea is going cold as normal because I waffle on and do other things and run around doing jobs and then I don't drink my tea. So, and I'm looking, I'm thinking, oh, I need to sort the vine out and make sure that's not growing out of hand. I've done some of it, but there's the neighbor's one. See, I'm waffling anyway. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed my garden tour. I'm going to go and plant some more salady vegetables, salady things under the trees, pick some more of the Mange too, eat some breakfast because my stomach is grumbling away and drink my slightly lukewarm tea. <laughs>